Well, hello, my friends. Just getting an unrestricted look at this a little more. This is a, a Birch and Stratton Brute Make. This came off. I haven't even power washed it, but the owner gave this to me. Well, okay, my good friend Brent, you guys have heard me talk about him. He came by, I did a little welding for him. He's making up something on his lathe. And uh, he gave me this little lawnmower. So this is the sticker for it. Bridge and Stratton 500 series. But it's actually, if you look really closely, it's a classic. You see the tank below the air cleaner there? Right there. But he was smart enough to bring the sticker. So when we're all done, I'm gonna put use some goop and we'll put that we'll put that on there. So once again, it's a mower with no bag, eh? But this is a pretty nice mower with no bag, so I might get a few more dollars for it if I decide to sell it. But I like these. They're hard for me to sell them. It does have fuel in it. But I don't know. It'll probably fire now, eh? Let's just keep this handy. You're still watching, right? a good idea. The light is quite bright on the spark indicator. Okay, let's get you down there. Firing through the, uh, it's firing through the. Let's just try. We might have an intermittent problem with the spark, all right? Because I'm not a big fan of these metal hoods they put on the Briggs engines. So let's just try it again. Back up on the. I put you guys on a pedestal. Eh? Let's just see if it does it again. Nope. Starting to get an That's pretty weird, eh? I usually don't worry about flooding these because they're almost unfloodable. Bit. 
Okay, that's interesting. So let's get it up on the on the hoist. I think I want to take a look at the keyway. I don't even know what time it is. I get so involved out here. I don't eat. I don't. I have a jug of water just so that I don't die of dehydration. Here we are. We're going to take and have a look at the uh, flywheel key. Mm. 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 I'm going to... Let's go. Let's get technical. Five sixteenths. And three eighths. So these will be three eighths on there. Oh yeah, and a quarter inch on the dipstick. This is a slightly. I think I've only seen one of one other of this style. Of uh, uh, what am I trying to say? One other Briggs and Stratton classic. That said, it was uh, 100 and what did I say? 100 and one moment, please. It says it's 158 cc's. So what do they do with a Briggs and Crystal Classic to get 158 cc's out of it? Different piston, something. Yeah, now we need a quarter inch to get the dipstick off. Here, you guys are on the wrong side. But I'm just taking off bolts, eh? There we go. Well, let's not be shy about this. We're just gonna squirt the gas, the grass out of the end of here. Now we're going to take this cup off of here. We don't have to take the flywheel, just the cup. And I believe those are like a 13 16 thing. 7 8 probably 7 8 Nope. Wouldn't be a 1 inch. Oh yeah, 15 16 You got her, Cotter. You guessed it, Chester. Yes, I use air tools. Hmm. I would say that the uh, flywheel key looks just fine. Right there, there's the shaft the key in the shaft and the flywheel key is right on it. So we're good there. I wonder if it does need another another coil, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna take the coil off but I'm not gonna take it off just yet. So I'll just give you a little look at the coil. There it is right there. And the high voltage comes out of there through this resistive uh, hood and into the engine. But I'm not going to take it out just yet. I have to get something to eat before I fall over. Pretty frugal lunch today. Okay, let's uh, remove this, this uh, coil and try a different coil. It might even be, have a mouse bite in it. This one was sitting outside in a rural shed. Not outside, but it was in a shed that rural, eh? Not that in the city makes that much difference. But.
Who's been my lucky good go charm here? I always like to do the right one first, and then it torques the coil down to the left one. Like that, and then like that, and we spin close out of there. Brakes on, don't forget. Okay, there's, hello guys, there's our new coil right there. It's been spaced with the closest business card. And I think there's only one guy I can think of that actually uses the Briggs and Stratton coil spacer thingamajig, eh? So that's kind of fun. Now let's just see. Now we could have carburetor trouble too, but we're not even getting a we're not even getting a, a pop when uh, we're not even getting a pop. Pardon me when we uh, prime it, right? And it should it should go. Three eighths. Three eighths, there. So I tried fixing the old coil just by tweaking the connections. You know, cleaning them up with a wire brush, etc. And that didn't do anything. And this thing, to me, should run. If we get it back together again, we won't have to take it back apart again. Okay, this time we don't have a resistive cap in the end. Remember I showed you that that cap was 5,000 ohms? But this spark plug, I checked it off line, and it's, it's, a zero, oops, it's a zero ohm spark plug. a little fast actually. Ta -da! Now it's just a tune-up, blade sharpen. So that cost me a used coil. Let's see if it starts again. Three thousand two hundred and eighty RPMs, or what was it? Three hundred, three thousand two hundred and seventy, or sixty, or something. Like that. <laughs> anyway, it was right on. Uh, that's a perfect RPMs for a, an engine that does not have that many hours on it. It was abandoned because of that intermittent coil. Thank you. All right, my friends. It's been a few days. I'm just going to check the spark plug on this little brute classic. I think I cleaned it. It's an E3. Yes, I did. It's actually quite good. Those are good plugs. There's no carbon on it. So now I'm going to warm this guy up. And then change the oil and the blade at the same time. Or change the oil and sharpen the blade at the same time. Alright. Let's 
get this jacked up and get the oil changed on. Yeah. You guys can come a little come a little bit closer. Is that a nine sixteenths or is that a looks like a nine sixteenths? Dirty dog. broccoli underneath it. But I'm going to get a ratchet and a socket right now and uh, get that oil out of there. It's nice and hot. on this side. Come on Bruce. Pay attention buddy. There. Get that gong show straightened around? Yes, we did. I'm just gonna go sharpen this blade. Yes, bit dark. So let's get this blade on here. It's balanced. I just used the nail trick. All right? And we're gonna just to verify after I tighten this up. plug back in again and get some oil into it. And then we'll wipe her down. Oil! strange noises outside my door. I'll just check that out. If I don't come back in an hour, call the cops. I forget the neighbor next door, they have a screamager. Good. So this one had a bad coil, hey, you remember that? Well, 
All right. Oil's in. Plugs plugged in. Spark plug. Cleaned off the outside, cleaned the underside. I just got to put a little tiny bit of oil on those wheels. And you really have to take the wheels off to do this properly. But, but if there's a gap, it'll work its way through. Oil is, if anybody's ever spilt any oil like I just did today, you know how it spreads. Okay, El Dono. Good. Are you ready? Shouldn't even need to be uh, primed, I don't think. So thank you very much for watching this one with me, you guys. It was a good one. I enjoyed it. Thanks, Brent, for donating it. Okay, on this classic uh, mower, 22 inch, by the way, this is the, sh the side chute, but under there is a removable uh, chute for mulching. And this keeps the pressure on it, and it's quite easy to remove, actually. Yeah, well, anyway, it just pops off that, that hinge. Oh, let's take it off. <clears throat> yeah. Now we got a side shooter. So, for a mower that doesn't have a bag, that's a pretty smart thing. Because most people would just leave it like that and mulch. Thanks a lot.